losing its strength. You can see the wind is whipping out here, and we've already seen one sign of the potential storm surge. Take a look at this. Around 7.15 tonight, the ocean actually coming up onto this road, Ocean Avenue, leaving this seafoam behind. The mayor tells me it's the first time water has come onto this road since 1991. It is just one of the signs of Sandy's magnitude. The sea is fierce as Sandy inches closer to the Jersey Shore. At high tide, the water poured onto the road, and now the sea foam is left behind. Storm watchers in Belmar in awe at the intensity already. I've never seen anything like it before. For New Jersey, it's, it's really crazy. It's nice to watch it right now, and then when it gets a little dangerous, we'll get out of here. In this borough, 6,000, mm -hmm. everyone is yeah. going to get out.
of, of buses. There will be a limited resumption of service uh, starting today at 5 p.m. Limited resumption is basically the Sunday schedule. Um, and hopefully tomorrow there will be full service on the buses. A um, little ray of, uh, of, uh, of light is uh, the no fares will be charged on the buses today or tomorrow as New Yorkers are struggling to get their lives uh, back in gear. The subways, when we talk about subway restoration, um, Joe Loda is here and he'll talk more about this, but I think rather than talking about restoration of the system, it's going to be more a conversation of restoration of parts of the system first. Uh, someone said to me last night who had years of experience in the subway system that he had never seen this before. Uh, I think the decision to move the, remove, stop the service, move the trains and move the buses to safer ground uh, was uh, was uh, truly the prudent one. But having done that, the damage to the tracks, tunnels that are underwater is uh, unlike this city has seen in decades, if ever. Uh, so that is a that is a yeoman's undertaking. Uh, switching over to New Jersey, NJT has now begun an extensive inspection process as the first of many, many steps towards safely restoring the system to normal operations. All bus, rail, light rail, and access link service remain suspended until further notice. The agency says that crews will be working around the clock to assess the storm damage and to make repairs or cleanups as necessary. Well, even after the service is restored, residual flooding and storm damage may cause bus and rail and light rail and access link customers to experience all kinds of delays and cancellations. System-wide cross-honor will remain in effect through at least Friday evening at 11.59. And WCBS reporter Peter Haskell is observing the destruction in Lower Manhattan and he now joins us live. Peter? And uh, people here in the East Village are still shaking their heads at what they caught here last night. On Avenue C, rushing water, four to five feet deep. There were currents and waves, people say. It was carrying garbage cans and all kinds of debris. The water was so deep and the current so swift, cars were lifted up out of their parking spaces and put up on the sidewalk. You look inside some of those cars now, there's one BMW with the wheel plank to the back window, and the back seat. Styrofoam, leaves, twigs, branches, and puddles of water. And that is not a common sight. On 14th Street, uh, the people talk about two and a half to three feet of water in the street. And keep in mind, Avenue C is blocked from the East River. This is not like you was right on the East River. Blocked from the East River. A man was staying uh, with some friends uh, from out of town at Forest in Alabama. He says he never seen anything like in water. Rushing on the street, the wind was blowing, it was whipping. And now, speaking of which, we've got another rain shower. We've had several of them this morning. The sun was out a while ago. Now, another rain shower as this crazy weather continues. Live in the East Village, your household that are used to the SEDD News. And this is Sophia Hall live in Woodbury, Long Island, where the frustration level is very high. In fact, I drove around for two hours and could not even get five miles from my house. Tree after tree down in the middle of the road, and these are massive trees. I did see some of the large trees, their roots pulled from the ground on top of houses. Another problem, the power is out, so the stoplights are not working. So once you maneuver around the trees, like wow. here on Jericho Turnpike, wow. you cannot get past the intersections easily. There are people out the about, though. Many are at Dunkin' Donuts in Syosset or the no. nearby Bagel stop. Boss. The lines are out the door, two of the only places no I found stop. open. Many people hoping not to spoil all of their food in the refrigerator. They're keeping their doors shut. So they're at Dunkin' Donuts trying to get something to eat. I'm live here in Woodbury, Long Island, so be a hall WCBS 880 News. It's news time, 12.09. Let's do traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the 8th, so as close as we can get. Exactly. Okay, Chris Majette, they were supposed to reopen almost all the bridges as of nine minutes ago. Has that happened? It has not happened, and uh, we're not sure why, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. We still have the George Washington Bridge closed. I just double-checked with uh, Jason, my producer, just to make sure. Are you sure they're still closed? He said yes. Uh, the George Washington Bridge, Throgsnake, Whitestone, RFK, Tribe Road Bridges were supposed to reopen at 12 noon. They are still shut down. Staten Island.
of bridges are closed as well. Uh, now the Queens Midtown Tunnel, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, and uh, the Holland Tunnel will remain closed uh, indefinitely. They're still trying to pump the water out of the tunnel itself. The Lincoln Tunnel has been reopened all along. Also, we've got flooding along the Belt Parkway just east of the Verrazano Bridge, so that's closed in both directions. Uh, the airports are closed, mass transit is suspended, and our next traffic update in less than 10 minutes on the CBS. And now let's uh, check out the weather forecast with our meteorologist, Bob Larson. Good afternoon, Bob. Yeah, good afternoon, Pat. What was once Hurricane Sandy, the storm itself is now centered over west central Pennsylvania. It's still going to affect our weather here for the next few days. We've got a coastal flood warning till 3 this afternoon. Wind advisory till 6 this evening. Cloud, sunny breaks this afternoon. Windy, wind gusts to 45 miles per hour, at least along the coastline. Uh, <laughs> even though we will see and have seen some sunny breaks, still showers moving through on occasion. High temperature 56 to 61. Not quite as windy tonight. Additional showers, low 51. And tidal levels will begin to recede. We'll see cloudy, breezy tomorrow. Additional showers at high of 56. It's currently cloudy. We do have some rain in the area. Temperatures range from 49 in New Brunswick to 60 in Iceland, 52 in Midtown, and a high of 56 to 61. Our meteorologist Bob Larson in the WCBS Weather Center. WCBS News Time, 1210. The world is full of chimes. We have a chime that tells us when to get up and when to go. Chimes that tell us that our elevator is here. That someone's at the door. Or to close the door. And when you drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee, you'll know there's someone in your blind spot the moment you hear. Always check visually prior to changing. Way down to Belmar are gone as well. This beach usually has about 40 yards, 50 yards from where the restaurants are out to the ocean. Gone. All of it's gone right now. The, the water is still coming up. But this area is going to take a long time to clean up. And they're not even let people. They're not even letting people come in. People want to come in and take pictures of this because they live here or they vacation here or they come here for a day on the shore. They're not letting anybody near it because they just don't know. There are canopies that are still blowing around. You can see the wind gusts, I don't know, probably 40 miles an hour or something like that. It can still blow things off of buildings, and that, that's what they're concerned with here. They have police officers keeping people away. And back to you guys in the studio. Unbelievable. It is. You talk about the people who just want to come out there and see it. It's very emotional. When we watched Governor Chris Christie giving his news conference, he also got choked up talking about uh, the devastation, particularly to the shoreline. There. Millions of dollars in damage in the state of New Jersey alone, and in so many states this has occurred to throughout the Northeast. Let's go over to Old Greenwich, Connecticut right now, where Lisa Calagrasi has the latest in that state. Lisa. And you know, Ken, there are so many power outages. So still a lot of confusion here. Some of these patients and their families didn't even know where they were headed to. Um, you know, the, the hospital had no phone service, so they couldn't even notify many of the family members. In effect, this was a 12 and a half hour mass evacuation. I mean, they evacuated this entire hospital. They had eight generators here. Some were working, some weren't. Not enough power really to the system. They lost power completely last night. They had eight feet of water in the basement. Now we're hearing reports they're sending some staff members home as they just try to get to the bottom of what happened here. Bellevue Hospital, by the way, still getting power from their emergency generators. So that's the good news. We're live in Kips Bay. I'm Stacy Sager, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, sweet girl, you interviewed Stacy. Hope everything goes fine for her. Let's check in with Sarah Wallace. Sarah has been there all along. They've been doing this mass evacuation in Little Ferry. And you've had a chance to talk with some of the, uh, the rescuers as well. Sarah? Well, Ken and Lori, it is a dramatic situation right now. We've got multiple evacuations going on, different vehicles. People just came off the side that truck. They're looking at a five-ton military vehicle. There are people on that as well. And then just across here, you can see a rowboat that people have just gotten off of this rowboat. So in a canoe over there, 
So we are talking about oh, whatever they could to get out of the house. And people described that it was just an amazing scene last night, that the water just came flooding in, going from the basement to the rafters, and people were absolutely trapped inside. I think that's out of here for a second but you can see behind me mike let's just turn around here and we've got some people who are uh, just uh, coming up of the getting getting checked here mike if you can just swing around for me but we've got some people here just they're getting checked they're asking them they're not sure where they're going to go obviously trying to get them to staging areas right now which is down the street you can see all of the military vehicles here coming in and What's going to happen? i got to just step away here because this flatbed truck's getting out of the way. But basically what's happening is that they're putting all of the people who are being rescued, as you can see them coming off yet another five-ton vehicle, and they're putting people onto oh. these trucks, loading them on here, bringing them out, and then just as quickly as they're doing that, they're taking them to the staging area, putting them on another vehicle that is taking them to the nearby shelter near Teterboro. So it's a, it's quite an amazing operation. We've been watching this now for several hours. These people getting offloaded off the vehicle. I'm just going to take you here live for a second and let you just watch this drama unfolding here. Yes. 
because we're in the color, that's why it flows so bad. And then, could you just describe where the water is the deepest? I mean, that we're talking about down here, if you can point out the Hackensack River is right down the road. From right, right, like uh, down here, and then all along here, we're going along down around this way here. And that's why, that's where it's deep. So it was, I was told it was maybe over 10 foot deep down down here earlier this morning before the, the water started to recede. And that was by the uh, fire chief that was on duty here all night. And earlier you talked about that the water is receding a little bit, but then it's going to come back even greater later on. Yes, as the high tide comes in again, but the high tide's already passed, but it takes a couple hours in this area to catch up. And so we'll come back in again. Is there any idea at this point how many people that we're talking about? We thought there oh, were I, a couple of hundred. Now we're just seeing wave after wave of people coming out. Yeah, because now what's happening, like I said, that because nighttime starting to come, they're starting to get worried, and, and they don't want to stay another night. Appeals. Uh, the president with Bruce Springsteen by his side. I don't know who, uh, who Romney has with him today. Uh, we'll have Eli at five. Big Cruz tomorrow. And anything that happens that you need to know about if you haven't. Really, we're kind of settling in now. There's people without power, but you're going to have to just hope that the day, I mean, yeah, hope every day's the day. That's basically it. Uh, and in those towns where you're going to have a long wait, you got to go find some place to live, which is right on a lot of people, which is terrible. And uh, we're going to be doing some stuff to kind of help those people in the weeks to come to plan some stuff as a company, so we're working on that, so we'll be announcing that when we're ready. Um, and uh, we'll also have some other stuff to give away later in the week. And I want to tell you that the um, Hope Shines for Shannon dinner was moved. I hope everyone knows that and they want you to RSV meet the tickets that are still coming. It was November 1 now, and obviously with the storm, it's now going to be the 26th. Is it 26th or 27th? I forget. Is it 26th or 27th? I keep asking me to say it, but I forget which one it is. I think 26th uh, at the Woodlawn Country Club at 7 p.m. Same place. 29th, excuse me. 29th. Nick's Nets is the 26th. That's right. They are, they're doing Nick's Nets on the 26th. Um, so, uh, 29th, so we'll have more on that as we get closer to the event. Uh, both local basketball teams off well, Knicks look good. If they have kid plays like that, Knicks are going to be good. Kid, if kid look, you know, kid, he could help if he's got a lot of life. And, uh, and that's one they're opening, so that was good. Knicks in action tonight against the Sixers. That's in action tonight against Minnesota. So the basketball underway right now. Everybody off to a, a decent start there. Uh, we'll go around the NFL, and the Eagles and the Saints will play this evening in New man. Orleans as the Eagles try to keep their uh, hopes alive. Uh, Andy Reid's job clearly on the line, so are the Knicks. Um, and already, I'm already, you're already hearing owners out there scouting around for coaches. In Cleveland, you're hearing that already, and in Tennessee now, you're hearing that too, where Tennessee has just been abominable. And they gave up, you know, 50 points to the Bears yesterday. They got a great one tonight, game. Anything we can do to help. Again, this is Adam Krausar from Lester Glen Auto Group. God bless and be safe. New Jersey 101.5. It's uh, 149. Time for New Jersey fast traffic. Out of the Garden State Parkway getting up towards exit 17. The right lane is knocked out, but the lane is really not too bad. The rest of the parkway also in pretty good shape. As you work your way through West Orange, 280 westbound at exit 10, you've got the ramp shut down. That's because the traffic signal has fallen down. Route 35 shut down both ways between Point Pleasant and Mattisquan over the Brielle Bridge. And that is because of police activity. New Jersey Transit, Northeast Corridor, North Jersey Coast, Raritan Valley, all dealing with overcrowding. They're all on a special schedule. The Atlantic City Line, that is back to normal. Traffic every 15 minutes. Next report at 203. Instant updates at NJ1015.com. I'm Greg Rice on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, thank you, Grayster. Uh, let's go to the weather in Judy. Here's New Jersey 101.5 instant weather for today. Passing clouds and some sunshine, high 50 to 52. Tonight, clear and cold, some lows in the 20s, low to mid 30s, urban and coastal areas. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies with a high of 48 to 50. Wednesday, rain and wind developing could be heavy at times with highs 46 to 48. Currently, Dennis, that's temperatures? I do.
There we go. Burnsville 42, Howell 44, Burlington 44. Weather every 10 minutes on New Jersey 101.5. Ken Allen Casper's five-day forecast anytime at nj1015.com. Uh, nicely done, Judy. Had some important Thank information you. on LBI in just a second, but I have a little emotional announcement. It must be read. You have the best tailgating party. It's a freaking snowdrift, you know, it's gonna melt.